Is anybody else's hair getting this bad? So long. What's up guys, it's Andy Filicotti. Have you ever heard of the time slice photo? I actually hadn't heard of one until my buddy Adam posted these awesome photos. It's basically like taking different slices of time, hence the time slicing. I like the effect, so let's learn how to make one. And what better way to learn than giving them a call? Okay, so Adam, how do you take time slice photos? Uh, so basically I, I choose a, a building or, or something that has light specifically that it's gonna like become very obvious when uh, it becomes dark outside. I take as many shots as I can to sort of get that transition from day to night or night to day, depending on when I'm shooting. So how long do you actually shoot for? For the ones that I've, I posted on Instagram recently, it was about, I think an hour and a half and I took a shot basically every five minutes. Right at sunset basically? You just go out at like an hour or 30 or 40 minutes before sunset? Yeah, I usually get there maybe 20 to 30 minutes before sunset, whatever it says on like my iPhone, sunset will be. And then um, I go until past blue hour to like where you know, you're starting to see stars and the street lights are very clear. More night weighted is better. Yeah, I think so, okay. just to get that dramatic kind of effect. And do you use like a remote for your photos to take like constant every five minutes? Or do you just- No, I'm it? I'm pretty not technologically savvy. So I just set a five minute timer on my phone and then I stand up, take a picture. And turn okay, it. well that seems easy enough. Yeah. <laughs> so you probably need about like 10 to 20 photos. Yeah, I would say that bare minimum you need like five you know, covering that whole space. But I think you usually end up with about 15 to 20. So once you actually get all the photos, do you edit them in Lightroom and then put them in Photoshop or do you just put them all in Photoshop? No, I take them in the Lightroom. Um, I usually crop them for Instagram. Uh, and you know, I'm doing all this with sync and I do like the basic like tweaks to the horizon and everything. Once that's done and it's been sharpened, I open it as layers in Photoshop and that's where I start doing the actual slicing. And then how do you actually slice them themselves? If I'm just doing the like straight rectangular bars, I just take the uh, rectangular selection tool and I draw a box, uh, I layer mask it, and then I draw another box, I layer mask it. The easiest way to figure it out is to use the rulers to figure out exactly how um, wide your photo is and then divide that by the number of photos that you have. And that'll tell you the size of the box that you need to draw. I make a layer mask. I usually apply it to the next slide, move it one sort of deviation to the right, and then do it to the next image until I've gone through all my images. And that, my timer. that's all you do basically after that? I do add uh, drop shadows uh, to each of the layers. I've seen other people you know, blend it with gradients. Um, recently I've been playing around with different shapes, like doing, you know, sort of square, concentric squares moving out from the center. You can kind of really get creative with it at that point. All right, cool. I think yeah. that's uh, everything we need to know. Cool, thanks Adam. Yeah. So now that we have all the tips that we need from Adam, let's work on our own time slice photo. Now it is currently raining and sad and overcast in DC. So um, I'm actually gonna use photos that I have previously in my library. Um, obviously, if you've done time lapses before, you probably have a few photos laying around that is perfect for this. So let's head into Lightroom and Photoshop and start working on our photo. And you can see now I have Lightroom open here and I have 17 images of the capital we're gonna use and that's between the 15 to 20 that Adam recommended and you can see it's over time here. Let me just go through them real quick. So now I'm gonna edit all the photos in Lightroom real quick. And of course, when you edit one of your photos, you can just highlight the rest and right click and do development settings and paste settings. That way it'll save you time when you're trying to make them all look the same with the same edit. This is looking pretty good. So let's go through and just double check everything. So I like the way that this turned out. So now let's open it in Photoshop. And you can do that by just selecting all your photos, right clicking and clicking edit in and then open as layers in Photoshop. So now that we have all of our layers in Photoshop, we actually have to calculate how wide each slice will be. Uh, and this can easily be done by using the calculator. But first you're gonna have to get the width of your image and that can be done by going to image, image size. And you can see here the width of our image is about 4,000. So we're gonna copy that number and we're gonna head over to a calculator. And so we'll paste in our width here and then we'll divide it by the number of photos we have and that's 17. So you can see here that the widths have to be around 226. So just go ahead and make your selection and you can see on Photoshop it pops up with the width. So we can just see the amount of width we need to get here and we'll get 226. And if it's too hard to actually get it exact with your mouse, you can also right click and hit transform selection and you can type it up here in the width section and that'll give you an exact width also. So now here we have our slice. So now we have to go through and make a mask for each 
layer. And that can be done by just clicking the mask button here. So now we've made our first mask. So it looks like our first slice is coming through. And now let's go through and do the second one. You can quickly do this by just dragging the uh, masks around. So I'm holding option on Mac and I'm dragging it to the next one. You can see here it's still on the left, but if we unlock the layer mask layer by clicking the little chain icon here, uh, we can actually drag over the mask. So you can see here we're moving the slice around. So all we'll have to do is drag the slice over 226 pixels again. And then we'll just copy it again and we'll repeat that process for all the layers. So I think this is starting to look pretty good. Now we're gonna actually add the shadow that Adam recommended. Uh, to about a 50% opacity and we can do this by going to the first layer just double click the little image and Then we'll have the layer style effects and we can do a uh, drop shadow and you can see here It gave us a shadow um, and then you can just pick the settings that you want. Um, so I'm gonna do um, distance zero size We'll do about 50 and we'll do about a 50% opacity So you can see here the little rim actually let's lower this size here I think that looks pretty good, so we'll hit OK. And then we can copy this effect to all the layers by right clicking on the layer and hitting copy layer style, and then selecting the rest of our layers and right clicking and doing paste layer style. And then you can see we have a perfectly time sliced image. And after hitting save, it'll actually save it back into your Lightroom library. And here you can add more coloring or effects or anything you would in Lightroom, of course. Um, and then you could export your photo like you normally would in Lightroom. Now what's so fun about this effect is there's so many different styles you can do, different slices, different directions, different shapes. Um, as you can see how Adam did it with the shadow on each slice. So if you wanna make one that is actually smooth in between the transitions, so it looks like one image, I'll show you how to do that right now. So I'm gonna go through and remove the effects that we just added. You can see here, we have the slices and a little sliver. We're actually gonna to have to go through and add in the area to the left of each slice. So if you just select the mask by clicking it and then select the area to the left and hitting delete, and you can see it's adding more white area here. Uh, you gotta make sure that you have black and white as your primary is like this, because if you do black here, when you hit delete, it'll add black. So just make sure that you have white as your secondary color in Photoshop. So now let's go through and do that for each layer. And you can see that we're doing it correct just by looking at this little area down here. So you can see the image looks the same right now and that's a good thing. But what we're gonna do is actually go to the first one, double click the mask, and that'll give us the properties for the mask. And you can see here under feather, it'll actually add a blur and you can see that actually blurring the area over here. Definitely play around with this because it's gonna depend on what kind of photo you have. Um, I noticed for my photo about 100 pixels is good. And then we'll copy and then we'll do that for each layer. And you can see here now it's smoothing out and looking more gradual rather than having those steep effects as before. And boom, now you have a gradual effect now. Um, it looks all like it was taken at the same time. So in addition to this effect, you can also do different things like different shapes. Adam did a really cool one with squares. So let's try one with actually doing a uh, circle for our image. So since the middle point of our image is the capital, we'll actually select that as the middle. So I'm gonna do a circle select tool here and then select the middle. And you can see here it does this, but if you hold option, it'll actually center from the middle. And then we'll hold shift, and then we'll just do this. This will actually make it all the same proportions. So once you select the first part of your image, create a mask like before, and we can actually hold option and select our old mask here. So now that we have the selection picked, we can just right click and do transform selection and increase the size again. And then we'll do the same thing, create a new mask. And then we'll do the same thing over and over. And there we have a more radial effect uh, for your transition. Now, I know this is a lot of repetitive tasks over and over. There's also some apps that you can use to do this automatically. So let me show you another one that I found. It's actually called Time Slice Studio. Now, this is not free, but this is actually will make the process completely uh, automated for you. This app will actually let you pick a range of options, including circular ones like we just did. Uh, you can turn off the shadow. Uh, you can do linear, radial. Um, all types of effects. Uh, this definitely is a way easier way to do this if you don't want to uh, sit in Photoshop all day. And you can do slants and things like that. And that app makes it really easy to export your image uh, just automatically if you don't want to deal with doing everything manually. This app is probably a better uh, option if you have like 50 to 100 images because it would take a really long time to do it in Photoshop. So as you can see, there's tons that you can do with this technique, especially during these times of staying creative at home. Uh, definitely a fun thing to do, especially if you have a lot of old images you wanna go through. Special thanks to Adam Brockett for giving us his tips. Uh, if you liked this video and you found it helpful, remember to like and subscribe. And uh, thanks again for watching. See ya.